All right, so in this video, we're going to learn about ad hoc networks and how to set them up on Raspberry Pis and then how to connect to that ad hoc network. In order to understand what ad hoc networks have to offer, I think it's good to sort of go over router-based networks. So let's say we have a laptop and a Raspberry Pi, and they both have IP addresses, but they cannot communicate directly. They have to, the computer, if it wants to talk with this Raspberry Pi on the drone, it has to go through the router, and then the router will send any messages or communications to the Raspberry Pi. But we have the central hub here. Well, that can be a little bit problematic if you want to wirelessly connect to a Raspberry Pi whenever you're in, a, in an environment where you don't have a router or you don't have internet. So that's why I have a Raspberry Pi on a drone here, because if you go out testing in the field, well, you're not going to have the internet and you're not going to have a way to connect to that drone. Well, that's where ad hoc based networks come in also referred to as peer-to-peer -peer or P2P. In an ad hoc based network, well, the laptop and the Raspberry Pi can communicate directly. We don't need a router. And so we can go out to the field with our drone and there's no internet out there, but we can wirelessly communicate. The laptop can SSH into the drone and everything's all good. So in this video, we're going to be setting up an ad hoc network that is hosted on a Raspberry Pi. And then we're going to set up a DHCP server to allocate IP addresses on our ad hoc network. So in the router-based network, the router assigns IP addresses to the laptop and to the Raspberry Pi. But in an ad hoc-based network, we don't have that router assigning IP addresses. So we're going to make our Raspberry Pi assign IP addresses to anything that connects to it. And then in the last step, we're just going to connect to our ad hoc network from both a Linux and Windows PC. Connecting to the ad hoc network from Linux is easy enough, but there are some steps that we have to take in Windows um, to, to allow that ad hoc communication to happen. And then the last thing to be aware of, your network adapter, your wireless network adapter, might not be able to communicate via ad hoc. It probably will. We'll show you how to check if your current device is able to communicate with ad hoc. But if you don't have a wireless network adapter right now, this product here has been confirmed to work with ad hoc. But with that, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is set up the ad hoc network on our Raspberry Pi. I currently have mine configured to connect to the internet via my router, so that's how I'm currently connecting to it. And now I am in the Raspberry Pi. So. I am using the, let's see, the Stretch Raspbian 9.4 operating system. So any configurations I'm going to be walking through here might be a little bit different on whatever version you're using, but just keep that in mind as we're going through this. So go ahead and type if config, and what we're looking for here is the name of our wireless interface. So mine is called INT Wi-Fi 0, and also make note that I'm currently connected to the 192.168.2 subnet. So that is the subnet that my router is operating on. And when we're making our, our changes to configure our ad hoc network, we want to make sure we're on a different subnet than the one our router is using. Okay. So let's go ahead and make those changes to this wireless interface of our Raspberry Pi. And we, we will do that by going to Etsy Network and then go ahead and list. And there should be a file there called Interfaces. And before we go into our Interfaces file, we want to make sure that we make a copy of it just in case we, we want to go back to whatever we had before we made changes. So let's copy that Interfaces file and we'll just name it Interfaces.backup. Okay. This is where we can edit any of these network interfaces. So we're going to sudo vi into interfaces. And currently, as I said, I had my wireless interface configured to connect to the internet. And that is what this bit of code was doing. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. And then this part here is going to be how we configure our ad hoc wireless network. 
So go ahead and type auto and then the name of our network interface. It might be different for you. And then iFace int Wi-Fi 0, again, whatever your network interface is, inet static. So we're declaring that this network interface is going to have a static IP address. And then the next line, address, this is where we actually assign that IP address. So earlier I mentioned that my router was on the 192.168.2 subnet. Well, we want our ad hoc network to be on a totally different subnet. So I just chose uh, 192.168.4.1 for my IP address, and it's on the .4 subnet. So we're good there. Then go ahead and type the net mask here, just, just as I have it right here. And then this, the, the next three lines, we're configuring our ad hoc network. So wireless channel one, and then wireless ESS ID. So whatever you type here is going to be the name that appears under the available networks. So you know when you click here, or wherever you're viewing potential networks, and you look at all this stuff here, well, whatever you type here for your wireless ESS ID, once we're, we're done configuring our ad hoc network, it'll show up in this list. And then for wireless mode, we're going to be using the ad hoc wireless mode. So we're going to um, go out of there and hit colon WQ. Well, in our ad hoc network, we, need, we don't have um, a router to assign IP addresses. So our Raspberry Pi is going to have to assign IP addresses. We can do that with a program called ISC DHCP server. So go ahead and install that. And then once that's done installing, we will go to this file here under Etsy default, and then ISC DHCP server. We're gonna VI into that. And what we want to do here is just tell this program what network interface that we want the DHCP server to operate on. So again, my wireless interface is int Wi-Fi 0. So go ahead and type that here under interfaces v4. And make sure that's in double quotes. And then once that's done, go ahead and save that. So now our DHCP server knows that it needs to operate on our um, wireless network interface. Now we need to do some other configurations. And we will do that under the etc DHCP dhcp.comp file. All right, so here we are. So these, the first two lines we're gonna add aren't really crucial, but this is not crucial for the uh, correct operation of our DHCP server. So if you don't have a domain name or domain name server that you wanna use, just go ahead and copy what I have here. It will work just the same. But this part here is important. We do need to have the authoritative keyword ending with a semicolon, and that just allows our DHCP server to be the authoritative IP distributing source. All right, so now we're going to add this text here, of course, modifying for whatever your system may be. So remember, we assigned a static IP address in this example that I'm running through in this video of 192.168.4.1. Okay, so that subnet is 192.168.4.0. So your subnet is just going to be the first three digits of your static IP address. And then go ahead and type net mask, the same thing here. And then this range part, this is um, important. This is the range that our DHCP server is going to distribute IP addresses in. So if we try to connect to our Raspberry Pi ad hoc network from our computer, our DHCP server is going to assign an IP address in between 4.150 and 4.170. So we have these this range of 20 that I have assigned here. You could go from 0 to 255 if you wanted to. And then if you wanted to use the DNS or domain name options, go ahead and add those here. But if you don't have those, just add in what I have here. And then the option routers, this, this is going to be the static IP address of our wireless network interface that we just configured. And then option broadcast address. And we need to specify the default least time and max least time. These two times are standards here. 
Once we have all that configured, we'll go ahead and type colon WQ. Okay, so with all that being done, let's go ahead and reboot our Raspberry Pi. We'll type sudo reboot. All right, and that obviously broke my SSH connection to my Raspberry Pi. All right, and then go ahead and disconnect from the network that we were on previously. And now you should see that we have this drone ad hoc network available to connect to. So that is awesome. If you see this here, that means that your Raspberry Pi is successfully broadcasting a new ad hoc network. First, let's type if config and we'll see that our wireless interface has no IP address, okay? And then when we connect to our drone ad hoc network, and we type if config again, we will have an IP address, 192.168.4.150. And that's, that's pretty cool because, as you remember, we specified the range as being 192.168.4.150 to 170. So that means that everything is working. And now we can SSH into our Raspberry Pi with the static IP address that we specified previously. All right, so now I am in the Raspberry Pi, and I'm not connected to the internet. There's no router involved here. I'm directly connecting to my Raspberry Pi from my Linux computer. All right, so now we're going to try to connect to our ad hoc network from a Windows computer. So here I am. Please try to ignore the messiness of my desktop. I know it's pretty ugly, but it is what it is. But go ahead and click on the Wi-Fi icon and look for all the available networks. And you should be seeing the SSID of the ad hoc network that we just configured. So you might think, you know, we can just try and connect to it and everything will be good. Well, Windows 10 is a little bit more tricky than Linux. So it actually isn't allowing us to connect to this network. So we have to do some manual stuff if we want to connect to our Raspberry Pi ad hoc network from Windows. But it's easy enough to do, so let's go ahead and pull up a command prompt. We'll type CMD. This is kind of a crucial step. We need to know if the network interface on our Windows computer is um, able to connect to an ad hoc network. Go ahead and type netsh wlan show driver okay so we'll scroll up and what we're looking for is hosted network supported if this says yes then you should be good to go and your wireless interface will be able to, to connect to the ad hoc network if it says no as the the network interface currently is you won't be able to connect to the ad hoc network you might be able to find a driver somewhere on the interwebs that We'll be able to change this no to a yes, but that is out of the scope of this video. If this says yes, you're in good luck, so let's continue to the next step. We're going to click under this Wi-Fi icon, and then hit Network and Internet Settings. We're going to go down to Network and Sharing Center, set up a new connection or network, and then manually connect to a wireless network. All right, Network Name. Here, we're going to add whatever we named our um, our ad hoc network. I named mine drone ad hoc because I have a, a Raspberry Pi drone that I want to connect to when I'm out in the field without having an internet connection. And then security type, no authentication. Okay, then leave everything else as is. Go ahead and hit next. Successfully added drone ad hoc. Perfect. Now hit close. Now the next thing we want to do is go back to the command prompt. So go ahead and go back to the command prompt. We're going to type net sh wlan set profile parameter name equals and then the name of our ad hoc network and then connection type equals ibss. Go ahead and hit enter and it should say it updated successfully. If you are using a, a network interface that cannot connect to an ad hoc network, this might have erred right here. If that was successful, then we can go ahead and try to connect to our ad hoc network. So we'll type net sh wlan connect and then the name of our ad hoc network. 
All right, connection request was completed successfully. That's awesome. All right, so we'll go here, and now we are connected to our ad hoc uh, Raspberry Pi. All right, and then once that's done, we should be able to ping it, and we'll type ping, and then the name of the static IP address that we chose to assign to our Raspberry Pi. All right, awesome. And then, I mean, if we can ping it, then we should be able to SSH into it. I'll just do that right here just to show you guys. We'll type the IP address we want to SSH into. And we'll type in our login credentials, and here I am. All right, so I am connected to my Raspberry Pi from a Windows computer without using the Internet. So my computer is directly communicating with the Raspberry Pi without the need of a router.